I've seen this video linked quite a few times in Discord recently, but Flat Earth Banjo is wrong. This photograph is actually solid evidence that we live on a globe. Hello, my dear friends. We are here one more time to demonstrate to you guys that we do not live on a spinning ball Earth. We live on a flat, stationary Earth. This past weekend, I had the chance of meeting some Japanese flat earthers. My understanding is that Flat Earth Banjo does live in Japan and he did meet up with some Flat Earthers, so this information was provided to him. On the left, you can see the location of where the photograph was taken. Now, I'm not certain if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but this is the Futami Okatama Shrine, a shrine famous for its wedded rocks, and that's because of the rope that hangs between the two rocks. This is the photograph they are referring to. I have circled Mount Fuji, and to be honest, without even looking at the curvature data, I had a pretty good idea that we were only looking at the top of Mount Fuji due to its shape, especially the size of this flat top. But I'll explain more about this later in the video. They did do a good job with the documentation, and the distance is 201 kilometers or 125 miles. Now this is information that is just in Japanese. And I'm assuming that Flat Earth Banjo was the one that added all of this data that includes feet and miles. All this information has been transferred to this photograph. So they're using this shoreline right here as their horizon. This would be zero feet elevation. So 813 meters should be visible, but this number over here is not correct. The 9,721 feet of missing curvature is correct, but when we subtract that from Fuji's elevation, we actually get 2,668 feet. And here they've moved the horizon up to show what should be visible if we live on a globe. The photograph, he took it from 125 miles distance or 201 kilometers. You can observe here, mountain, uh, this little hill right here. Everything is showing in the photograph. And that's what you see right here. This is the photograph, a record-breaking photograph from uh, Shima province, 201 kilometers away, 125 miles away from Mount Fuji. Now he just made the claim that what we see here in the photograph is actually what we see over here in this long distance photograph. And this is not even close to the truth. This is actually a photograph of Mount Fuji taken from Lake Kawaguchi. And Lake Kawaguchi is located to the north of Mount Fuji. So it's not even in the line of sight of the photograph they are using. And on the right, I have an arrow pointing to the lake surface elevation, which is 833 meters. So this line here is not even close to the horizon on sea level. On the right over here, I have added in a scale ruler. So when I drop the horizon down lower here for that additional 833 meters, we can see that the visible 813 meters is wider. Now we also know that we have an atmosphere that refracts, and of course we don't know what the actual conditions were that day, but this calculation is a pretty good average. So we go from 2,960 meters down to 2,530 meters of hidden. So using the refracted hidden rate, we got 1,246 meters or 4,088 feet. That should be visible. Now earlier I told you that when I looked at this photograph, I had a pretty good idea that we were only seeing the very top of Mount Fuji, and this is why I knew this. I grew up in Seattle, we have five volcanoes in our state, and I have hiked around all of them. Of course, up in the upper left, we have Mount Rainier that dominates the skyline of Seattle. Down in the right, you can see Mount Baker, which is just south of the Canadian border. 
Mount Adams is southwest of Mount Rainier, Glacier Peak is northeast of Seattle, and Mount St. Helens is south of Mount Rainier. Now at one time this used to be known as the Mount Fuji of the Northwest because of its very symmetrical shape, but in May 18, 1980, it blew its top off. So volcanoes have a very characteristic shape, and of course it starts with their flattened top. The upper part of the mountain has very steep slopes, and this changes to a gentler slope at a lower elevation, but even that gentle slope is well above the surrounding landscape. And when I looked at this photograph, what I saw was a very large flattened top and two steep slopes. Now again, Flat Earth Banjo and his Flat Earth Japanese friends are claiming that this is what we should see if the Earth was a globe. So I'm going to do the same thing, except that I'm going to use the refracted hidden. This shows what we would expect to see on a globe with refractive hidden. And I will cut out a section here. And I scaled it to this photograph so the top of Mount Fuji and the horizon are in alignment. Now again, it was that flat top that was one of the dead giveaways for me. And as you can see here, they are of a very similar size. In fact, we see the exact same thing with the photograph in Flat Earth Banjo's video. The only difference is, is that the flattened top is a little bit bigger. Now the transition to the gentle slope does take place at the bottom of the photograph down here, but this area is covered by the shoreline that is across the bay. And look what happens when I add the whole photograph taken from that lake. I mean, even the shoreline of the lake is well below the visible horizon. So how these guys came to the conclusion that this is proving the Earth is not a globe is beyond me. So it would have been much more accurate if Flat Earth Banjo had says 9,721 feet of Mount Fuji is missing, proving Earth is a globe. But if this had been the photograph of Mount Fuji, then even I would be a flat earther. Now again, growing up in Seattle with a large volcano like this that dominates the landscape, it was quite easy for me at a very young age to understand that we live on a globe. This photograph was taken from Discovery Park in Seattle, so we're looking at the north side of the mountain, and here are two parts of the mountain that are easily identified, and of course you could use these as a reference when you look at this mountain from different locations around the state or even in Canada. And this is a very good example of this, something that I have seen with my own eyes. So on the right, we have a photograph taken from Victoria, Canada. Now Victoria is on the south end of Vancouver Island, and it is across the Strait of Juan de Fuca from the state of Washington. So when you can only see the top of Little Tahoma above the horizon, it really doesn't take much thinking to understand that this is because we live on a globe. The believers would say that it's refraction, but it's not refraction. There's just no curvature out there. So this is it for today, guys. One more proof that we don't live on a spinning ball. Now, funny that Flat Earth Banjo should make that claim about refraction when even his own evidence without refraction supported the globe, especially when we include the whole mountain. This is definitely closer to the truth. So thank you, Flat Earth Banjo, for providing another photograph that is more evidence that we live on a globe.